Mm. Oh yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Love it. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Shout out to Ron Oliver from Tower Light Records, man. That mix is the bomb. So it is Thirsty Thursday, and we have the New York Stinking Giants taking on the San Francisco 49ers, favored by 10 points. No Saquon. Yeah. We're going to find out about that $40 million that the Giants paid for Daniel Jones tonight. We're going to find out about that. So we can find out, you know, here's where we're going to be able to gauge. There are the football polls out there that literally, um, I, I just, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm a homer. I know I'm a homer, but when you look at what the Cowboys have done thus far, they're dominating performances. I'm not saying that the 49ers uh, didn't dominate, uh, you know, uh, against the Steelers, but I'm not sure the Steelers are a great team. You know, they kind of, you know, they played with, I guess, the Rams, but the Rams scored a lot of points. But be that as it may, we have the Dallas Cowboys, the most polarizing franchise that's out there. We've got Joy Taylor, who literally, I'm sorry, um, I, you just don't know what, what, what it is that she's even saying. One minute she'll say, well, I need to see more from the Cowboys. You know, it's like, wait a minute. They're outscoring people 70 to 10. Their defense is dominating. You've got the best player in the NFL in Micah Parsons. Dak Prescott, thus far, has got the highest QBR in the NFL. You have CeeDee Lamb on a historic pace. You have Mike McCarthy seeming to make the right moves at play calling. You've got Dan Quinn with a defense that's on fire that you even admit that could be one of those defenses that we talk about forever. But somehow you say, well, I understand the Eagles haven't played that good, but they've got, you know, uh, they've got a new system that they're putting in and new coaches and a bunch of players, you know, but you say that they're good. You say that they're good and you trust them, but the Cowboys who right now are doing it, not, not learning a new system and, and, and feeling their way through it, not having six new starters on defense, not having to go out and sign other players because their linebacking core has been atrocious, that their secondary has given up seven TD passes. Oh, no, 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 no. The thing about speak it feels like, with Shady McCoy as well, that's right, Shady, I'm getting you too. It's like they don't really do the homework. They just show up and say, let's just talk about what we think on here. I guess that's why it's called speak. But Mia, Mia Coombs actually puts it correctly. Here, let, let's just listen to actually how you do it. Okay, just, just listen. Just listen for a second here. Against the Jets, Dak Prescott had a QBR of 87 and the total offense put up 0 .07 EPA per play, which doesn't sound wild until you go back and you look at the Jets' defense's game log. That's a higher QBR than any game last year, higher EPA per play than all but two games. Pretty impressive offensive performance. I would describe it as extremely controlled. And the quarterback obviously deserves a ton of credit. I thought he played fantastic. He just ball was coming out quick, making the right reads. But I also thought while well, I was watching, man, Mike McCarthy just has a read on this defense. He did the fantastic job getting the right matchups for CD Lamb. He had such a good feel for the Jets' zone defense. They play a lot of cover three in the quarters. The Cowboys just had their number, frankly, in terms of dialing up the right beaters versus those looks. After the game, Dak spoke about the impact of the play calling and the coach, which is something he's talked about this summer. I think he called it the Texas Coast offense, yeah, he, but he felt like Mike McCarthy was doing a really good job of getting him to align his drafts, his footwork with what the receivers were doing. And th this game was like such a great showcase for that. Like bam, bam, everything on time, everything synced up. So. 
Dak played really well, but I feel like McCarthy, it's week two, but pretty impressive. I guess, you know, the Giants defense doesn't suck either, but really, really good defense in week two. It's hard to say anything bad about them. They've done everything really well, and I think it's fair to give Mike McCarthy some love because every time he gets close to a mistake, we pile on him. So he's done well so far. See, that's how you do it. That's actually how you do it. That's actually real analysis. She went through, and, and I'm not saying that because they're just favoring Dak, okay? I'm not. The reality is, is you get Joy Taylor. What are we talking about here? A, you know, isn't the NFL a win count? Okay, so that's what it is with the Eagles. Well, with the Cowboys, I have to see more. Mia Coombs goes through. She goes through the numbers. She goes back to compare it to where he was last year. So you can look and say, best QBR he didn't had all but two games. You look at that when you say, put it in the context of you're playing the Jets' defense. I know Aaron Rodgers wasn't there, but Aaron Rodgers ain't playing defense. That defense, that same defense that took the ball away four times from Josh Allen and only gave up 16 points, gave up 30 to Dak Prescott. So if you just compare what the Buffalo Bills offense did against them versus the Dallas Cowboys. Now, again, I am a Dallas Cowboy homer, so I'm going to shade it towards my Cowboys. You're not getting any of this analytics, analytics from Speak. When you get Shady McCoy saying, Cowboys are ass, ass. They don't pass the eye test. Forget your eyes. You can have 10 people on the corner watching a car accident, and every single one of them's got a different story. That's the eye test, which means you failed. When you have to go to the eye test, that means you're losing the argument. You just are. So that's where we are. Now, for the Cowboys, we're actually looking pretty good right now, health-wise. Um, Tyler Smith is close, um, as well as uh, Donovan Wilson. Um, yesterday, we had Zach Martin not practicing. We also had Donovan, I'm sorry, uh, J. Ron Curse because of illness not practicing, but should be ready by the weekend. We'll get a better take on today's practice where everybody stands. But from the health standpoint, knock on wood, and actually this is new wood here. This is actually our new uh, desk here. The Cowboys should be in great shape going into this weekend against the Arizona Cardinals. And hopefully we get in, get some work done, get out without any injuries, and get a victory and move on to the next one. So here we have everybody who's got their opinion on the Cowboys. And, you know, you've seen them anywhere from six to one in the power rankings. And again, power rankings, of course, change every week. So do they really meet anything? I guess they really don't. So I want to go to Rich Eisen and get his take on his top nine to say today. See where we go from there. All right, let's go to Rich. Rich, take it away. All right, so here we go. Let's see what Rich Eisen's got for his power rankings this week. All right, it's a Wednesday, everybody. You know what that means? You're in your what you want. Definitely what I want. <laughs> That's croissants? No, that was yesterday. Yeah. Susie, ice cream. Ice cream. No, ice cream. no, no, no. So get there. What you yeah. said for me to, oh, to do for years. Yeah, yeah. Give people what they want, Rich. Give us what you want. The it back. is the football version yeah. of croissants. Yeah. yeah. It's my power rankings. Hit it. There's your mini power rankings. But this one is mine. Power rankings. There you go, bro. Right? Presented by Carnival Cruise Line. Come on. Yeah, you're going to like it. I think so. And I'm on the good ship Seattle. Let's He's fired up today. On board, people. The Seahawks have recracked my top 10. I love it. I Seahawks. love Geno Smith going in at Detroit, where everybody's thinking this is Detroit's year, including me. And going in there <laughs> and, me. and showing them who's boss. Oh. They don't have their tackles. They don't have the prez yet. Ooh. Oh. They go in there and they take the Lions to overtime and they take them out. And now the Seattle Seahawks are one and one and they knock the Lions off my list and put themselves back on it. Something that I'm sure they were celebrating in the locker room. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. To that. I can't Number nine that. on my list. New to the list. New. New. Oh. 
Their defense is buzzing around. Their wide receivers may be the best in the league that nobody's talking about. And they look pretty damn good Ooh. because there's somebody who wakes up dangerous and flagging the flag at number nine. Oh, the Baker Mayfield. Tampa Bay. Baker freaking Mayfield. They got the Eagles. Yes. Money, yes. <laughs> okay. Mike Evans won 11 straight games last year with Tom Brady without scoring a touchdown. He scored a touchdown in the first two games this year. And Shaq Barrett's buzzing. Warren. He's not trying to choice. say Baker Mayfield's better than Tom. And they are. Is it? They are buzzing. <laughs> And now they're going to be buzzing in Tampa. Did you hear Rich had a nine on his power rankings list presented by Carnival Cruise Line? They're going to say exactly those words. <laughs> Number eight, down two spots. I still have them on here. Hey, they hung in there. They hung in there against the Chiefs. I got the Jaguars here. I still think they are better than most in this league. I still think they are top third in this league. Mm. They got what it takes. And... No shame in losing at home to the Kansas City Chiefs, people. Well, you okay. have an eight, so that means they're top quarter, top 25. Oh, uh, okay. You know I mean? Oh, top third. I've got 10. Yeah, These are 10. These yeah, are but, 10. They're, but they're eight. So okay. You know what I mean? Excuse me. I was told there would be no math oh, on this test. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Number seven, up two spots. Mm -hmm. Say say what you will about them. They're 2-0. Oh. They're the Baltimore Ravens. I'm putting the Ravens right here. Um, they won a game in Cincinnati, pal. And I know what they did against, they played Houston week one. It's just two weeks in. They're 2-0. They've got Lamar. They play defense. They're going to get better on offense. Um, they're number seven. Up one spot, the Buffalo Bills are sixth. I told you about Josh Allen. Don't worry about this guy. There are going to be some messy days. There will be some days where you got to clean up. You're going to look at the kid with the bag. You look at the kid and say, you're going to leave that there, really? That's what I say to my kids all the time. I'm like, Hey, look around the room. You're going to leave that on the floor? Really? <laughs> That's what it is with Josh Allen okay. every now and then. But then they come home and they delight you. That's what happened. He went home. He delighted the fans. Stephon Diggs and him, they're tight. Yeah. I like the Bills. They're sixth. Top five now. Five. Down two spots. Down two spots. That's it. Philadelphia Eagles. I need to see a little more. Not mm. going to lie. Oh, oh, we need to see they're a little more. Spots. They're, they're down two spots? They're down oh. two spots. Hmm. Well, what are they so doing? Do? You know what? What they did they get down? They're just a little off. They're a little off. They you know what concerns me? AJ Brown's barking. How is AJ Brown barking at this at, at his quarterback? What's going on? He wants the ball. I understand that. They got the end zone. I understand. Zone. You gotta do what you gotta do to uh -huh. win. Uh-huh. We're watering, we're fertilizing, we're not arguing. Down two spots. Yeah. Because number four on this list, at no change. I like the Chiefs better than I like the Eagles. Really? Oh, yes, of course. I know they lost they the game. They did win the Super Bowl. They barely scored last week. Kelsey, Chris Jones, for Patrick Mahomes. It's our privilege to be paying rent in his NFL world. Okay. One and one team. I got it. Head of a two and zero. That's team. correct. They're my power rankings, and they're sponsored. <laughs> Number By three Carnival on this list, up two spots, and I have them above the Chiefs because I'm being consistent. I said this uh -oh. team is playing like they are the most. Complete team in the American Football Conference, the Miami Dolphins, up two spots. I have them three what? on my power rankings list. Oh, wow. Tua is the man. Tyreek Hill wow. scored a touchdown even though Belichick held him down on the offense in terms of yards a little mm -hmm. bit. Raheem Mostert's running up the gut. They play better defensively. They're going to get better with each passing week. Mm -hmm. The four words for the Miami Dolphins season, if Tua stays healthy. Because I can tell you as a New York Jet fan, with all due respect, Mike White is a, is a, is a step. Let's just put it that way. It's just a step. a step. You can figure out which direction the step goes, up or down. Come on. Yeah, I just, I, you didn't deserve the shrapnel. <laughs> That's just a and I'm going to get the shrapnel because two on the yeah. list are the Cowboys. What? what? Number two, Cowboys. Two on the list are the Cowboys, and I am still, I chose this team to win the Super Bowl, so I'm going to stick with them as oh. long as they're undefeated. Cowboys? No. 49ers. Number one, Christian McCaffrey leading the league in rushing. Mm -hmm. Defensively, defensively, they've got some people. I'm circling. Okay. I'll just say this to you, TJ. I am circling. You've got his sign up, too. You thought I'd have him number one just because they beat the Jets and Zach Wilson. I thought I was going to like this list. No, I like this Week five. Tyreek. Week five. Circle week five. Disrespect is real. 49ers, Cowboys, week five. Circle it. Week circle. five. Circle. circle it. I don't know where I'm circling. Circle, circle it. 49ers are... All right, there you go. So, 
Number two, week five, looking like it's going to be the, the, the game of the season, at least early part of the season. I, I'm okay with that. I mean, you know, again, San Francisco's owned us in the playoffs. San Francisco is a complete team. Christian McCaffrey has run the ball um, really, really well. Again, we'll see when they play some other teams. I don't know what the Rams are just yet, but the Rams seem to have played and found some, some who are able to make some plays against the 49ers. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll be watching tonight from back at our man cave. We'll be live with the Giants versus the 49ers. We'll be scouting them and um, probably holding Giant fans because they'll be crying. You know you will, Ron. Uh, you know you will, Miss Buttermilk Biscuits. I'm Mark Holmes, and I got work to do before I get out of here. Peace.